Hey everybody, it's Zach from My Shire Farm and I am back again with another video to help you on your journey with Caternix quail and becoming more self-sufficient. In this video, we are going to continue our talk about quail for profit. We are doing a playlist on our YouTube channel, My Shire Farm. You can go to the playlist tab and in that playlist tab, we have a playlist called you guessed it, quail for profit, so you won't miss any of them. They are in order, and it seems to be helping quite a bit. Um, we do have other playlists on there as well that you could check out that I really think could help you on your journey with Caternix quail, such as uh, new to quail and what I need to know, all about the colors, pop a builder of things, uh, the hatching process, and so many more. So check those out. But with this quail for profit playlist, I've had five. That's right, five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, five people contact me in the past couple of weeks and they took the ball and just started running with it. They are sold out. They are on a wait. They are increasing sales. They've got more customers than what they know what to do with and they are well on their way and they are very excited as they should be. So I just wanted to do a shout out. I have not seen them, seen them post publicly, uh, so I will not mention the names. I do have them that I was going to, but I just decided not to, but uh, congratulations to those of you that have contacted me already and uh, are just taking the ball and running with it. I'm very proud of you. Congratulations and keep up the great work. But uh, today we're going to be talking about quail for profit and it's going to be a little bit different. So you're going to have to hang in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the hierarchy of business and all the hats you have to wear. And then we're going to go into departments of running a business. Um, and then I'm going to give you tips and tricks resources and sources uh, to help you uh, manage. That's mainly what this video is going to be about. We're going to manage our time, manage ourselves, manage others, manage vendors, manage customers, manage, manage, manage. Uh, and that's what this video is going to be about to help you uh, with your small business because uh, time is money and uh, customer service is money and product is money and Money is money. I mean, it's all about that, right? It's profit, profit, profit. Uh, so anywhere where you can cut, uh, still have a great quality, but cut the time in half, it's going to save you money, make you money, and uh, be easier on you because there is a lot to do when you start running a business. Believe you me. And we're going to get into all that. Uh, before I do, if you will be so kind to hit the like button and just support our channel, I would greatly appreciate it. It makes me feel good. And, you know, it helps YouTube and all that jazz. Um, also, we've got a lot of great videos coming your way. We've got more Quail for Profit videos, all about the colors, pop a builder of things. And uh, he's got some new things that he built. We're editing those videos now. You won't want to miss them. They're actually pretty cool. Uh, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. That bell icon will give you notifications on when we post videos and go live. And do not forget, every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we go live right here on our YouTube channel, My Shire Farm, for a live Q&A. Every Sunday at 7 p.m., you ask the questions. I will do my very best to answer. And if I don't have the answer, we have a great, fun community that is very supportive, very knowledgeable. We have a lot of fun. They help you answer the questions as well. And uh, we have a great time, so I hope you can check that out. Okay, here we go. All right, so the first part's going to be a little weird, but you got to stay with me because I've got a big point, and I really think that this will help you. And it doesn't even have to be about Caternix Quail. It's any small business that you are starting or trying to grow. These are lessons that we've learned the hard way. Uh, I will give you some examples along the way. Um, and again, management management, management. We're going to give you tips and tricks and sources and stuff that we use uh, that just really cut our time in half that's really helped us do other things because there's always something to do, I promise. So, uh, and then at the end of this video, I am going to talk about a couple different things if you're starting a business as far as legality goes or how the proper way to start a business. I have had some questions on that. and I didn't think there was enough information for me to share for a full video. So at the end of this video, we're going to be talking about uh, market research, business plan. Um, we're going to talk about uh, 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 business structure, things like that. So stay tuned for the uh, end of this video as well, as we've got some good information that I, it might be helpful as well. All right, here we go. So there's a hierarchy of business uh, in any business. So I'm going to briefly tell you what that is, and then I'll tell you why I'm telling you, right? 
So there's employees. Now, when I was in the outside world, when I was working for other companies, um, a lot of them called them employees. And I never felt comfortable doing that because, you know, the bottom of the, you know, the, the lower level, the entry level positions are always the one that always seems to make all the money. And then the CEOs and the CFOs and all those people, you know, the, it's the, it's the entry level position that's, that's making the business, right? So I always call them team members. So that's what we're going to call them, team members. Um, so there's team members, there's team leaders, there's managers, there's general managers, district managers, regional managers. Then there's vice president, president, board of oper or board of directors, and then there's all the O's. There's CEO, CFO, COO, CTO, C. I don't know. They keep making up names. I don't even know what they do anymore. Um, but uh, the reason I said all that was to say this: you, as a small business owner, whether you have no employees or whether it's your family doing it or all by yourself, or you've got one or two employees, it doesn't matter. Um, you wear all of those hats. And uh, that is very hard for people to figure out and know how to handle. Um, so for example, um, again, that entry level position, that team member, well, that's your core, you know, that you got to feed, you got to water, you got to take care of your quail, you got to do uh, your inventory on them, you got to do your research on them. Um, but then the, the CFO, the chief financial officer, you also are. So you have to look above all that and say, okay, well, is this saving you money? What you're doing right now, is that going to translate into profit eventually? What's your EBITDA? What's, so you're always guess, second guessing yourself or always um, challenging. I don't want to say second guessing. You're always challenging yourself on every aspect. Um, so just keep that in mind. We might revisit that in a little bit. Uh, but it's a good, sound piece of advice that someone told me a long time ago and uh, I use on a daily basis. So I just wanted to mention that. I think this video is going to be long, but I promise there's going to be great information, so stay tuned. Hit the like button, support the channel. So uh, there's departments in every business. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mention all of the departments in a normal business and if you're interested, keep watching. If you're not, you can turn it off and that's okay. Um, and then we're going to go through each one as quickly as I possibly can and give you some tips, tricks, time savers, sources or resources uh, to help you limit uh, your interaction with that so that you can uh, do better stuff, but still keep the high quality, if that makes sense. So here we go. The departments are daily operations or operations, accounting and financing, marketing, production, sales, profit, communication, advertising, customer service, administrative, R&D, which is research and development, QC, which is quality control, and order and planning. Yes, I said all those super, super fast because wow, it's overwhelming. And when you're starting a business and you don't even know where to start and you've never done it before and you weren't taught, you, know, you don't even know where to go. You don't even know where to start. And it's very, very discouraging. Don't be. Don't be discouraged. Everyone feels that way. You are not alone. You just got to take one step at a time. Okay? So remember, you got to wear all the hats, which can be very frustrating, um, very overwhelming, very stressful, but it can also be very rewarding and um, be very profitable, right? And uh, something that you can really hang your hat on and say, yeah, I did that. Uh, I'm very proud of my Shire Farm. I'm very proud of our, our business, uh, what we stand for, uh, what we've done, what we've accomplished, and uh, and what we are planning on doing in the future. Uh, and uh, so I'm very happy with where we are, and I'm very happy with the direction that we're going. And uh, And I think that you can feel that way too. So here we go. I keep talking a lot. I'm sorry. Uh, so number one is daily ops. Operations. Now, remember that team member, you know, that low level entry level position? Yeah, that's the most important. If you don't do the daily ops correctly and accurately and with great quality and integrity, um, then you don't have a foundation. Your daily operations is your foundation. Okay. So, what we do uh, very quickly is we've been doing this for years and years and years. I do the same thing every day but we still have a checklist that we mark off every day. It's just an Excel sheet, and this is what it says. It's feed, water, 
inventory, collect eggs, get orders out, emails, phone, new orders. That's it every day. That is our what we call our core. We don't do anything else until those are done. And uh, we do them with the highest integrity and we do them like we've never done them before every day. Like that is what we do every day. Um, and that is because to me, that is our quality. If we're taking care of our quail and making that a priority, well, then everything else is going to fall into place because people are going to see it. And I think that's, that's a big part of our success is a lot of people have seen what we're willing to do for your quail. Cause that's the way we look at it is we look at it as we're just taking care of the quail until you're ready for them, whether it's eggs or live quail, it doesn't matter. We wouldn't do all of this if we were just raising them for ourselves, but because they're yours, we're treating them like they're royalty, right? Uh, and I think it shows in our quality and, uh, and so daily operations. So my suggestion on that is to make a list and check that out, check that off every day. Now you might say, well, it's just me. I do the same thing every day. I know my routine. I get it. But the bigger you get, the better it is to just have a list and then you don't even have to keep that in your brain anymore. Um, so that's just my suggestion. You don't have to do it. It's just what we do here. Second is accounting and financing. Now, um, for years and years and years, we did a DBA and a DBA it stands for doing business as. So if we were paying a bill or writing a check for supplies or whatever the case may be, <clears throat> depositing a check, whatever the case may be, it would say Zach Green, DBA, My Shire Farm. And that's just how we did it for years. We opened a separate checking and savings account that was a personal account and uh, all of our business funds went into there. Any sales from eBay or the website or auction site or my personal invoices or whatever the case may be, all the sales went into that and uh, all the expenses came out of that. And uh, that's how we did it for years. Uh, once we hit a certain level, uh, then we decided that it would probably be smart to move up. Uh, so we did become an LLC. Um, and 50% of the business Jenna owns, 50% of the business I own. Um, we won't get into why we did all that, but just legality wise, that's what the attorney says. Um, and we're going to get into that in just a, just a little bit. So stay tuned. We're going to get into that information as well, but we're talking about finance, so I'm going to stay on topic, right? So once we started doing that, then um, we decided, okay, since we're an LLC, then we probably get a need, need to get an EIN, and that's the identification number for the federal and state level for tax purposes, right? Which again, we're going to get into in a little bit. But when we did that, we decided to go to a bank and open a business checking and a business savings account. And so now all of that is separate. And I highly suggest, and here's one of the big tips, is if you're worried about taxes, if you're not familiar with how to do your taxes, or you don't even want to worry about it, QuickBooks is what we use. It is fantastic. It takes a while to set it up. It's not very expensive at all. Um, and so I've set everything up. So if we're paying for supplies, uh, we write the check, it gets withdrawn, and then QuickBooks already knows about it. It's linked to our accounts and they already take that into the tax bracket and say, oh, nope, this goes here for expenses and this goes here for sales and this, this, and this, and I don't even do anything. So at the end of the year, we print it out, we take it to our tax people and say, here you go. And then an hour and a half later, they say, okay, you're done. And I say, great, thanks. Uh, so QuickBooks is a great source where you don't even have to worry about the financial side as far as tax purposes go. I would highly recommend you check that out. Marketing. Now, marketing and advertising, there is a difference. Do you know what that difference is? Okay. Marketing is you doing research on what best suits your customers, what they're wanting, and the price point. It's research on your part. Advertising is um, supplying them or letting them know that you can supply them on what you have researched and what you're offering, if that makes sense. That was my best explanation. I'm sorry. Um, so marketing 
as far as research goes, whether it's competitors or local markets, surveys, blah, blah, blah. Um, you kind of need to put the time into that. Uh, so it kind that one kind of goes into the daily operations where you just have to do it right. There's really no cutting corners. There's no great service you can go to and, you know, like QuickBooks. It's just, you've got to put in the time and effort. And a lot of people talk about the advertising, you know, how do I advertise, blah, blah, blah. The marketing is much, much more important than advertising. And we'll get to that in just a minute. So put in the work, do the research, and we're actually going to talk about marketing at the end of this video. So stay tuned. Uh, next is production. Uh, I'm going to put production and order and planning all in the same one. Um, so production, we're talking about quail. So with that being said, you need to keep very good records, right? And we're going to talk about that with research and development as well. I don't use anything special for, for record keeping. Uh, we have 600 billion bazillion thousand uh, Excel sheets that we use on the iPad. Everyone's a little bit different and we check those out every day. Um, and uh, so we do daily inventory every day. We do daily our weekly uh, egg count, monthly egg count, yearly egg count every week, every month, every year. Um, and we decide what we want to keep track of and what we don't. Um, my best suggestion for you is make an Excel sheet of anything and everything you can think of that you would want to keep track and then revisit that every month and say, do I really use this? Does this help me at all? And if it doesn't, get rid of it. Um, but to start out, document everything. Document, document, document. There's nothing wrong with using a notebook. There's nothing wrong with using an Excel sheet. There's nothing wrong with using an iPad. You can look online and buy services that will help you keep research, but there's nothing wrong with just handwriting it out. That's what we did for years, and uh, I just had too many notebooks, so I decided to go to an iPad instead. Um, so sales. I'm a sales guy. I love sales. I love making sales. I love interacting with people to get the sale. That That's, that's what I like to do. Starting out in the business, I just looked at the sales portion. Never looked at the profit. <laughs> and uh, I had to learn that just because I could sell everything I had doesn't mean we were making any money, right? Uh, so sales are very, very important. But your opposite is your profit. So yeah, I could sell everything. I can tell you, hey, the website, everything on the website is 10 cents. Well, we could sell out probably for the entire year except for how much profit am I going to make? None. I'm going to, I'm going to go out of business real quick if I do that. Right. Uh, so, uh, again, that's going back to all the hats and you have to wear all the hats. So, you know, you might be a team member and you might be a salesperson, but you got to remember that you're also the CFO. You're that chief financial officer and you're looking at the numbers and going, yeah, you're selling out, but you're not making any money. So something's got to give here. Right. Um, and we've talked about sales and uh, adding customers to that earlier, so I won't bore you with that. Uh, profit is your bottom line. That is what you're bringing home. That is um, that is what's coming in minus what's going out. Your bottom dollar, right? Your EBITDA. Um, and so your profit is very, very important, and you need to keep track of that. Records, records, records. Now, QuickBooks will help you let you know what you're, what you, what's coming in minus what you're taking out, uh, whether it's for supplies or shipping or labor or, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, and then it'll tell you at the bottom, like, hey, you are negative. <laughs> so you got to change something or you made this much. And you're like, I put in a lot of time and effort and I only made that. Well, then we have to keep going with that. We have to reevaluate all the time. Your business has to evolve all the time. You should be looking at it every month and saying, okay, what can I do better, right? Because you're that top exec as well. You're in the trenches and you're doing it every day. But at the end of the month, you're sitting down at your desk, at the kitchen table, and you're looking up and saying, you're looking down and saying, okay, I think we should do better. How can we? And then you have that tough conversation with yourself. I did that. I still do it every month, every month. 
Um, so just keep that in mind. Communication uh, and customer service go hand in hand. So you're going to treat your customers well. I don't really, I don't think I'm going to go into that very much, right? And we've talked in depth about customer service before, but you have to treat your vendors the same way. So uh, cartons, foamers, uh, tape, um, I don't know, any supplies, if you're ordering scissors or, um, you know, if you're ordering hatching eggs from a breeder or cages or whatever the case may be, whoever you're interacting with, whether they're a customer or someone that you're there, you're their customer, either way, you have to start building a strong relationship with them because that will help down the road. I promise. So just keep that in mind. That's my little tip on that one is, um, treat everyone that's not a customer. So all your vendors treat them like they are your number one customer at all times. Uh, and I promise that will pay off. I promise. I promise. I promise. Um, and I mean, it's the golden rule, treat people how you want to be treated. Right. Uh, just makes sense. Uh, I wouldn't overthink all of this, okay? A lot of people are very worried about record keeping and taxes. If you're worried about it, I'm telling you, go to QuickBooks. Uh, it's very inexpensive, it helps a lot. It will break down everything for you. It, it'll make you feel good and it'll give you the numbers every month to look at. Um, so you don't have to worry about any of that. Um, but as far as record keeping for your quail, your research, your um, breeding, all of that, don't overthink it. Okay. A lot of people I see stressing out, they keep worrying about it. Don't make an Excel sheet and say, okay, what do I need to know? All right. Well, I want to know when they were born. I want to know what their average weight was when I put them in the breeding program. I want to know what hatched out of what. I want to know whatever the case may be. How much are they eating a day? I want to know how many eggs I'm getting from this cage every day. And then at the end of the month, you can look and say, okay, I was getting 37 eggs out of this cage and now I'm getting 21. So in a month, I lost that much production. So what, what changed? And if nothing changed, what do I need to do to change? Um, and so you're always just, again, you're wearing all these hats, right? Um, so administrative, again, you got to make sure that you respond to people correctly. Uh, you respond in a timely manner, um, that you are available and, uh, it really helps that if you're, you're not just, you know, uh, a business that sells on eBay or Amazon and uh, you ship them the product and then that's it. No, there needs to be follow up or, or resources that they can go to that you let them know about or whatever the case may. And here's a little tip. Um, I've had a couple people reach out and say, Hey, you know, I love what, what you're doing. I love what you're saying, but I don't want to do a YouTube channel. I'm not a very good teacher. I'm not comfortable with that. That's fine. You don't have to be. You can still encourage your customers. You can direct them to channels like mine or uh, Whiskey Tango Farms or Slightly Redneck or whatever the case may be. Uh, you can direct them to there, but you're still the one directing them. So that's okay. You don't have to do it all. Um, so keep that in mind. If you're not comfortable with doing YouTube videos or if you're not comfortable with doing barn tours or if you're not comfortable with whatever, well, somebody else is, and that's okay to team up with them. They're, you're not taking anything away from yourself. You're actually showing how great your customer service is that you're willing to direct them where they need to go. And now you have a customer for life. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Um, customer service, again, we already talked about. Administrative, we talked about. Research and development. Long story short, I always recommend that you have one separate cage for research and development at all times. I would not do more than that uh, because you have a business to run and your business is not just research and development. That is a side thing, right? So there's very, I mean, there's businesses that just do research and development, but for the most part, there's all these businesses, they sell their product and then they have a department that is research and development to come out with the next new thing, right? Well, you have one department. You've got a lot of departments. Don't make it all about that. So have one section dedicated to research and development. The rest of it is production. That is the best advice that I can possibly give you. 
I'm really trying to go in depth here so you don't have any questions, but if you do, comment below or join us every Sunday at 7 p.m. live for our live Q&A. Um, so research and development, don't make it a huge portion, 10% or one cage. Don't worry about the rest. The rest is production. Uh, quality control, make sure you're doing everything ethically, make sure that you're doing everything honorably, and uh, make sure that you are running a business that you are proud of and everything else will fall into place, I promise. If you do things right and on purpose and ethically and morally, you'll be great. And I'm always here if you have any questions. Um, and then order and planning, like I said, uh, you know, we have an Excel spreadsheet for that as well. I have all of my supplies and every month we do an inventory count. Uh, and then I've got a certain level with each one. As soon as it lowers that level at the end of the month, that's when I order. So again, it's kind of common sense, but it's not rocket science, you know, and a lot of people are overthinking this. Um, so don't make a simple spreadsheet, use a piece of paper and say, these are the supplies I have. This is how much it costs. And this is what I have. And this is how much I use in a month. And you will know that if you keep records every month, right? Uh, so we go through X amount of foamers in a month. So I know, okay, well, at the end of this month, I've got four months worth of foamers left. Well, it might take me three months to get the foamers, so I'm going to order them now. If they come in early, then I just have extra foamers, and then I never run out. Um, so just keep that in mind as well. I know this is very long, and I apologize. All right, so here's a couple things. Uh, here's four separate steps uh, to take when you're starting a business. One is market research. We've talked about this, but I do have a couple points that I want to bring out. So number one is uh, in the market research, you want, to, you want to find out how many competitors are in your area and what they offer and what seems to be the demand. That is called market saturation. You want to know who you're going up against in a way, I don't really like that terminology, but I guess that's what it is. You wanna know who your competitors are in your area, what they're offering, and what they seem to be successful at. And then you can decide whether you're going to compete against them or you're going to also offer the same product, but maybe in a different way. Maybe they're not offering colors. Well, then there's your there's your in. Then you're the color person in that area. Or maybe they're only doing mixed, and so now you're the jumbo person in that area. Or maybe they're just doing chicks. Well, you're the egg person in that area, or whatever the case may be. Um, or sometimes you just have to say, okay, I'm going head to head because we're all gonna sell, right? And there's plenty of market. You gotta create your market, right? Um, and then there's market size. How big is your customer base? And then make it a goal. So you can say, okay, well, it looks like I get, um, you know, 20 customers a month. Okay, great. What's your goal? And then people will say, what? And I said, well, what's your goal? So what's next month's goal? Uh, 20. So you you just want to maintain. So have goals. So, um, if you've got 20 customers in a month, all right, next month, I'm gonna push, I'm gonna hit 30 customers or 25 customers in that month. And then the next month, and you just keep growing. Again, it's slow and steady wins the race, right? Um, so you wanna know what kind of customer base is around you and then make goals accordingly. Uh, price points for each option. So again, in your market research, and this is all researching for you, you have to do the research for your area, right? You want to know what they're charging, and then you need to look at your expenses and say, okay, um, is that too high? Is that too low? Is that just right? Where are you at on the spectrum? Um, and then what do you like and dislike, and how can you do it better? So uh, let's say you look at let's say you look at us. Let's say you look at my Shire Farm, and you say, okay, I don't like that they do that. Okay, but I do like that they do that. Great, that's fine. Think again. To think twice. Okay, well, why don't you like what, what we do? Well, because whatever, right? Okay, so make sure that that's not part of your plan, right? Well, you said you like this. Yeah, I like that you do that, all right? Well, then what do you like about it? I don't know. It's For example, I have an auction site on Facebook, right? My Shire Farm Quail Lake Auctions. And uh, a lot of people love it. I've heard some people reach out and say, you know, I, I really love it. I don't know how to do it. Well, 
you might not want to saturate the market. That's fine if you start your own auction group, not a big deal. But why do you like it? Well, it's just fun and, you know, you interact with the customers. Okay, so that's your plan. That's your goal. So what can you do a little bit different than that, but still do the same thing, right? So you want to kind of find out what you like and what you don't like and go that way, if that makes sense. The second is business plan and mission statement. The mission statement, it should have three main parts. It should have a purpose, a value, and a goal. For example, our purpose is to, that's right, educate, encourage, and enthuse others to become more self-sufficient in Caternix Quail, or self-sufficient in general, whatever you want to do. Our value is quality quail eggs and live quail for a very reasonable price with 100% guarantee on every order that we will take care of you no matter what, right? And then our goal, well, our goal, my, our goal here is to support our family, pay for our farm, and, uh, and um, yeah, take care of our family short and long term. We're not trying to be millionaires. It's not going to happen in this business, right? Uh, but I provide for my family and... Uh, and we're comfortable and that's, I'm good with that. That That's my ambition, right? Uh, so those are the three steps for your mission statement. Now your business plan needs to include the mission statement, but the business plan is how you get there. It's your roadmap, right? So if I say, hey, come to my Shire Farm tomorrow, you're not gonna just drive here. You don't know where we're at. You don't know how to get here, right? You're gonna pull it up on your phone or on your car and you're gonna type in our address and then you'll drive here and it'll tell you how to get there. That's your business plan, okay? Your business plan is these. this is my purpose, this is my value, and this is my goal. How do I reach it, okay? Um, number three is choose your business structure. Again, we didn't do this for quite some time, but I know a lot of people are biting at the bits to do it. Uh, I highly recommend that you check all of these out. We did an LLC, but there's LLC and there's uh, sole pr proprietorship, there's corporation, there's S Corp, B Corp, nonprofit, and there's it, too many. There's just too many to choose from. Uh, so my recommendation with that is we went to uh, an attorney, local attorney in Miamisburg, and we had them do all of that. We said, we want you to do the paperwork for the LLC. We want you to do the paperwork to do the EIN number for federal and state level. We want you to trademark our name. And we trademarked everything. We trademarked MyShire. We trademarked my trademarked MyShire Farm. We trademarked uh, Quality Quail um, because that wasn't taken. And I thought, trademark it, <laughs> right? Uh, so you can do that. It does help the business. Once you become an LLC or sole proprietor, whatever you choose, and you become, an, you get the EIN, um, <clears throat> you have much better options to get business insurance. Uh, so we have two different types of insurance here. Uh, one for if someone comes here and hurts themselves, we're covered on that. And then if someone, uh, for example, you know, gets sick off of our eggs or meat or whatever the case may be, we have a, a business um, insurance plan for that as well. Um, so you can look into those as well. And we just went through, uh, our insurance company and just got business insurance. It's really not that much. I think it's, it's a million dollar policy on each. And I think combined it's like $445 a year or something like that. Uh, so for $2 million insured, it really wasn't that much. I just hate paying for it, but it is what it is. I'm just cheap. Um, and then, uh, the fourth is to choose a business name. So here's a couple tips, make it short and sweet. Make it easy to find and make it personal and catchy. Uh, so I actually thought about this and here's my dumb example, okay? Everybody knows Walmart, right? Well, I thought, well, what about wall art, right? So I looked up wall art and it automatically sent me to Walmart. I put in W-A-L-L-A-R-T and it just automatically sent me to Walmart thinking that I spelled it wrong. Then I googled wall space art and there's actually a website called wallart.com but that's really that's going to be really hard for you to find because walmart is always going to be the number one choice right uh, so look around think of a name and then google that name and say well what comes up close to it my shire farm there's not a lot of things that come up close to that so it's a great name for us um and there's a lot of great names out there already, but those are just my 
uh, suggestions for that. The last thing that we're going to talk about, and this is probably the most important and what you would want to know the most. So if you stay tuned from the very to the very end, uh, you're really going to benefit from this. The permits and the things that you need. Um, I highly recommend you become MPIP. That is the Natural Poultry Improvement Plan, I do believe is what it stands for. They are a great resource. Every state is different, um, so you will want to look up NPIP, um, you know, in your state, and you'll get that information. They'll give you a ton of information. They come out, they test your birds, which is good. Um, quail are very unlikely to get anything, but um, it's just a great resource to have and it looks good on your resume for your customers, right? The second is a small egg producer's license. With that, um, you, you're supposed to have a small egg producer's license for uh, if you're selling to a third party. So like we sell to a third party for uh, restaurants and grocery stores. Well, we don't actually sell to them. We sell to one person and they sell them uh, to the grocery store. So we have our small egg producer's license for that. So if it's going to a third party, that's what you need. Um, or a, a farmer's market, anything like that. It's like 25 bucks for the year. Um, it's better to have it than not have it. It gives you more opportunities. And that's a good resource to ask, okay, well, where can I advertise that? And they might give you some suggestions. Um, so those, those are mainly the two, but every state is different, which is why I don't like talking about it because some states are very, very strict and some states are extremely lenient. Um, so just keep that in mind. I hope that you stayed with me. I hope that it helps. And if you have any questions, comment below and I hope to see you. Um, I won't be on this Sunday. I'll be on Monday because it's Halloween on Sunday. So Monday at 7 p.m. We're having a special live YouTube uh, Q&A. I hope to see you there and uh, I'll see you then. Stay safe and have a great day.